Hi everyone, it's Kelly and Wyatt. <laughs> we are here today, well I am here today because I'm too lazy to vlog right now. <laughs> but I did want to do a video blog today to tell you all how me and John are doing in terms of our having a baby. If you've been following me, you know, what do you want more of? Oh, you want me to read you more of a book? Okay, well, we'll be right back. I'm going to read Wyatt a book and then we'll talk more. Sorry. We're back again. Sorry about that. Anyways, so we're doing really well. We're trying to conceive as of right now, and that has been, well, it's been fun for John. <laughs> it's been, no, it's been fun. Sorry. This is just weird because I'm, I'm just waiting for my older brothers and my two big brothers and my dad to watch this and for me to be absolutely mortified, but I guess that's why I'm doing it, right? Anyways, so we're trying to have a kid and hopefully we'll know by the end of this cycle if that is true. So by the end of this month, we'll know, hopefully. And so cross your fingers for us, please. Uh, I'm hoping to have a girl. John is hoping to have a girl. My daughter is hoping to have another or have another little girl in this house. Um, I don't think Wyatt really cares. I think if he could choose, he'd definitely want a little brother. So I would be happy with either or, but we definitely want a little girl. And so because we all want a little girl, the cards are kind of stacked against us because nothing ever happens like we want our plans. Wyatt will probably get his wish and we'll probably have a little boy. I don't really like dealing with the whole circumcision thing, why it has been circumcised, and the whole pee pee area, like, that was just way too much with him. What do you say? You say ta da? Ta da! Ta da! Um, so that would be nice again to have another little girl, but again, I'll be happy with whatever we're blessed with. Ta da! Because he's just so cute! Well, we're trying, and I was looking on the internet late last night because I was bored and I couldn't fall asleep and I wanted to see, you know, my mind was wandering, started to Google. So I got onto this pick your baby gender website and it had all of these weird conception myths of how to have a girl, which a lot of them are a little bit ridiculous. I, I don't know. I'll share them with you and see what you think, but okay. So one of them is make sure that you have sex two to three days before ovulation. Now the reason for this is apparently because the, the woman is just the egg. The man carries the other chromosomes which will decide, or decide whether or not it is going to be a girl or a boy. So they hold the XY chromosomes. So Apparently, the Y chromosome is the boy, and the X chromosome is the girl. The X chromosome moves slower, but lives longer, whereas the Y chromosome moves faster, but dies faster. So, which totally makes sense. I mean, think about it. We're, you know, slowly but surely live longer, where men are just like, and then die. There is that. So, you know, you're supposed to wait two to three days before ovulation and the idea is that all of the little boy chromosomes are going to be dead by then and long live the women they will still be swimming towards that egg now that theory is all fine and good and whatever but i don't chart my ovulation and i don't take my basal body temperature and all that junk because i don't think we will have an issue getting pregnant so that's not really needed and so i don't want to go out and spend money on all of these ovulation kits just to figure out when i'm going to ovulate so i can maybe have a girl <laughs> so that that's not something that i really want to do and you know yeah Next one is uh, another uncomfortable subject, sex positions. Apparently, <sighs> the couple's positions during sex must not allow for deep penetration. Oh, embarrassing. So, read the reason, apparently, is that deep <laughs> penetration, especially during ejaculation, moves the Y sperm closer to the egg since the Y sperm must move faster they may be able to reach the egg before they die out. Shallow penetration during <laughs> ejaculation. I could never be a health teacher. Oh my gosh. Will favor the egg sperm, again, the woman's sperm, since they live longer and move fast or slower. So, less 
in because that way the little boy sperm won't have any better, you know, leg up on getting to that egg faster. And the next one is vagina environment. <laughs> vagina environments. The woman must not orgasm during sex. So basically, if you want to have a girl, the road to doing so is not going to be very fun for you. Just the man. Which shouldn't be too hard for most guys, I think. <laughs> So yeah, apparently there's the alkalinity, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I guess when a woman does do that, the environment or, you know, surroundings of the woman's area becomes more or less hospitable for the girly sperm and more hospitable for the boy sperm. So there is that. Now here are some things that, the other things are apparently medically proven. These things are some just like random myths that I found. One of them, the right testicle of the boy is made out of the boy sperm and the left testicle is made out of the girl sperm. So apparently in the middle ages, because they believed this, they used, <laughs> some men cut off either the right or left testicle to make sure that they had either a boy or a girl. So, ouch, ouchy, ouch, ouch. The second one is if the woman's left breast is larger, then she's conceiving a girl. If the woman's right breast is larger, they're conceiving a boy. Which, I, I'm sorry, but my right boob has always been smaller. Always, always, always it's been smaller. Always. Yeah. I, yeah, it's always been smaller. So even during Ava, and I was obviously conceiving a girl during that. So that is obviously not true and should have been known to be not true back if the woman is carrying high, the baby is a girl. If the woman carries low, the baby is a boy. And I guess this is an old wife's tale, which is still believed because we were in Ann Arbor when I was pregnant with Wyatt. I was about eight and a half months, or maybe a little bit further along, but I was walking around and this like mystic voodoo woman, like no joke, she was a character, was on the street and just swore up and down that I was having a baby girl because I was just carrying so high. She knew it, she could tell it, you know, and I didn't have the heart to tell her that I was definitely having a boy. I mean, I had tons of ultrasounds to prove so, so I just kept it to myself. But again, obviously not a true myth. Um, number four, if the woman initiates sex that is more aggressive, the baby will be a boy. If the man initiates sex, the baby will be a girl. And that's also one I guess it's still followed, which, I, again, I don't know if that's true. I can't remember how it was when I conceived my other two, and I don't really want to think about it. Five, sweeter foods will help women who want to conceive a girl. Salty foods will favor those who want to conceive a boy. Now, that one I'm not so sure about, but I kind of want to believe it, because when I was pregnant with Ava, I was all about sweets. I mean, cherry cordials, everything. I was spending like $30 out of my paycheck at this chocolate shop on my way to work every week. It was horrible. But with Wyatt, I really was obsessed with those pretzel M&M thingies. Like the second they came out, anybody who followed me on Facebook while well, during my pregnancy saw that I was eating those every day. And I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty sure that our Kroger nearby ran out of those the first two weeks that they were there because I was buying all of them. I loved the salty when I was pregnant with Wyatt, so that might actually be true. Let's see, six, some people take note of the mother's age and year of conception. Now, this is basically the Chinese lunar calendar idea, which actually I have talked to numerous women around my age that can remember their conception and all of going by their ages and what they had in the year, it actually, those have all panned out and why it's technically panned out. And so in my case, if I do go by that, then if we do get pregnant this year, then I'm going to wind up with a boy. So remember this video blog and when I do find out the sex of this next baby, we will see if that is true. Seven, if the pregnant woman has an acne breakout on the chest and face during pregnancy, she would be conceiving a girl. That is an obvious one of why they thought that because if you're whole carrying a girl, you're obviously producing a larger amount of hormones. I don't know if that's true. I didn't really break out with either one of my pregnancies. Anyway, so those are the myths of conceiving girls and I don't know if they're true and I probably won't try to think too much into it because you know whatever happens happens and it happens for a reason I've started to realize and I would be just as happy with a little boy I mean I think Wyatt would really benefit from a little brother too either one's fine and we have all this stuff for little boys so it makes sense 
I just, again, would love a little girl. Who knows? Another thing that I looked up while I was on this kick of being ridiculous online was uh, conception myths about twins because I was adopted. I don't know any information about myself whatsoever. My birthday is not my real birthday. My parents actually came up with it. Uh, my name from Korea is not my real name. Again, the adoption agency actually gave me that. Uh, there's a lot of things that I didn't know about myself until I read my adoption papers. So, yeah, I have no clue what my family history is, which is great sometimes, like when you're at the doctor and you can just write not applicable instead of having to sit there for three hours filling something out or at calling your mom or dad asking them what your uncle died of. So, yeah, I'm lucky in that sense, but at the same time it's a double-edged sword because now I don't know like what to expect in terms of health concerns or if twins run in my family. <laughs> Which, that's another thing that some people don't understand is just because, say, the person that you have a baby with has twins that run in his family, that makes no difference. The gene for twins passes through the women, not through the men because it's your egg that falls. Identical twins are just a fluke of an egg splitting, whereas fraternal twins is because your body releases two eggs at one time. There's that. So I don't know if that's a possibility for me. I hope not. I really don't want to have twins. Four kids just sounds like too much. I did look up some things that, uh, some conception myths about conceiving twins so that I could do the exact opposite. To increase your chances of having twins, or in my case, to decrease you're going to do the complete opposite of everything I tell you in the next five minutes or less, depending on how much I edit out. Yeah, again, family history is one factor. Take a folid acid supplement apparently is one of the things that you can do. There, I guess, have been studies that have linked folid a folic acid and conceiving twins. I don't know. One woman, I guess, took it before they got pregnant and they conceived twins. So, again, n not very uh, solid <laughs> facts to go on, but... These are just things that are on the internet. Another one is eat dairy products. I guess there was another study that people who eat dairy products are five times more likely to have twins than women who don't, which I don't really know a single person unless they're lactose intolerant or vegan that don't eat dairy products. So again, I don't really know. I don't think that really holds much. You think there'd be more births again and twins and more of one out of every 89. Another one is continue breastfeeding. Check. Done. He stopped when he was 11 months. He didn't, he is, I'm pointing to Wyatt, but he didn't want to have anything to do with my boobs after 11 months, so. Lucky for my husband. Try to conceive shortly after discontinuing birth control pills. This is one that I've actually heard from a lot of different people is eat wild yams or uh, cassava, I think is the other one. I don't know if I pronounced it right or if that's even a thing, but I feel like I've heard that. If you eat wild yams, there's just a theory behind it that the chemical in them, which it just increases hyperstimulation in the ovaries, and again, you release more eggs. So I don't know how accurate that is, but I have heard that in mul from actually multiple people. I think a midwife that I used to work with also mentioned that. Another one is have a big family. You can all probably tell this from the Duggars, who have what, I think 30 now? No, probably like, I don't know how many they have, but it's tons. I guess the more times you get pregnant, the more likelihood of you having twins or more chances that you could have twins will occur. Try to get pregnant when you are older. Apparently women who are older have more chances of getting pregnant with twins than people who are younger. 25. Try and not have twins at 25. Long story short, I want a girl, but I'm not willing to do all these cockamamie things that don't make much sense to me. And actually the XY sperm thing does, but again I don't want to spend the money on those ovulation kits. Mm, and I don't want twins, so I will be doing all the opposite of those other cockamamie things so that I can increase my chances of not having twins. So, there is that. But God will bless us with whatever he decides, and I will be happy with whatever. Well, that's a lie. I won't be happy if I get pregnant with twins. It'll take me a while to come around, but that just sounds like a lot of work. That is my story. We are trying to conceive. Hopefully, it will not take that long, and I will know by the end of this month whether or not I am pregnant. Anyways, if I have forgotten any fun myths about having girls or boys or twins, feel free to uh, email me down here and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.